and a good evening to everyone who's been able to join us today in the second episode of Health Tape, Regenerative Medicine and Cell Therapies in Cardiology. Well, before we commence on with this webinar, um, I would like to tell you a little bit about what ISRM is. So, uh, Saloni, can I share my screen? Yes. Okay, I hope all of you can see my screen. All right. So ISRM, International Association of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine. It is the world's leading community for industry specialists, academic institutions, and researchers on the latest knowledge in stem cell technology, cellular therapy, and regenerative medicine. While it is an independent and non-profit organization that aims to support and raise advancement in stem cell science and its applications to human health. ISRM provides you with an extraordinary community that addresses three key areas of clinical interpretation, academia, regulatory, and commercialization. And through long-term strategic association with science research organization, academic universities, and industry partners, ISRM drives the advancement of research into clinical adoption and standard of care. Our vision is to make the association an authority of training and learning for quality advancement of healthcare with innovative regenerative medicine. And the mission is to deliver valuable knowledge that is effective, efficient, and respectful for science, medical, and healthcare service with integrity and accountability using both proven approved applications, methods, and protocols. And we are glad to invite you in one such meeting which fulfills our mission. So the body of ISRM comprises of Prabhu Mishra as president, Dr. Sharil Pallad as secretary general, Dr. Diana Mihai as vice president, and Dr. Nidhi Jha as executive committee member. Apart from them, we have a plethora of national and international scientists who have joined and medical practitioners who've joined the community of scientific advisory board. Well, why one should join ISRM? We know that stem cell-based regenerative and cellular medicine is an emerging and exciting area of medical practice. Although uh, bone marrow transplantation has been into practice for decades now, but even newer forms of stem cell-based therapies are emerging. And with the advancement of stem cell technology field, physicians with academic affiliations may look forward to get acquainted with these new emerging technologies and to be able to legitimately practice them. Well, ISRM gives such individuals an opportunity and acts as a platform for learning about the emerging technologies in stem cell regenerative medicine, ongoing research and education. And by joining ISRM, you get access to all the latest information about the regenerative medicine field. Well, so ISRM is a global platform for collaboration and alliances for translational research, cell and gene therapy, tissue engineering, immuno and developmental biology. It is also, it offers the most extensive library of information on cellular therapy, regenerative medicine and stem cell. And the educational process continues outside where members also learn from each other via professional discussion forums like our Facebook group uh, and local meetups, global events. Members may get the op opportunity to guide new members as well and participate in the research community or play a global role at ISRM. This adds to their professional experience and then can increase their chances to get a leadership role in the industry. ISRM offers outstanding publishing opportunities as well to its members to reach its captive audience in the scientific community. So who is International Association of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine for? Who all can join it? So ISRM is essential to scientists, doctors, researchers, entrepreneurs, academia, medtech companies, industries, anybody and anything working in the field of regenerative medicine, stem cell, tissue engineering, translational medicine, and gene and cell-based therapies. It is open to all those who've manifested a continuous interest in any of the discipline uh, related to stem cell research, personalized medicine, and regenerative medicine, uh, as evidenced by work in the field, original contribution, and attendance at meeting concerning stem cell research and therapeutics. Well, ISRM, with its mission to spread awareness and to train the medical practitioners in the field of regenerative medicine, 
comes up with its own signature courses. One of them is Fellowship in Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine. This is a one year long course with seven days of hands-on training. It includes live clinical applications, one-to-one -one training is available, scientific sessions are conducted, and written protocols are shared with the trainees. So who all can apply to this course? Gynecologists, obstetrician gynecologists, urologists, plastic surgeons, orthopedician, dermatologists, um, surgeons, physicians, dentists, and any other subspecialties. Another course, which is the signature course of ISRM, is Fellowship in Cosmetic Gynecology. Well, it is a shorter term, four months course with four days practical training and includes theory plus hands-on training sessions along with live clinical applications. One-to-one -one training is provided, scientific sessions are conducted, and the hands-on training is provided in invasive and non-invasive methodologies. Well, we are also coming up with our sixth regenerative medicine conclave, which is Stem Cell Express 2021. And updates about it will be available on our website. Yes, stemcellexpress.com. So um, due to the ongoing pandemic, uh, we may not be able to conduct it right in the month of June, but we are sure to conduct it and keep you updated through our website. And with this, I'll stop sharing my sc screen. Um, okay. Saloni, could you please help me identify the stop sharing? Okay, pause share. No. Okay, there it is. I got it. Okay, so I hope that um, ISRM, International Association of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine, um, is continuing to spread awareness and knowledge about the regenerative medicine through these episodes of Health Tape, even in the times of ongoing pandemic, as mentioned by our president, Prabhu Mishra, before. And with this, I pass it on to... To, uh, Dr. Prabhu Mishra to please commence on with the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nidhi, for introducing the uh, International Association uh, of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine to our here, most of the new colleagues. Uh, and um, it's my honor to invite today uh, to Dr. Yahaki Ban. And it's uh, really my pleasure to, uh, to introduce him. Uh, Dr. Yahaki Ban is a um, uh, consultant and intervention cardiologist practicing in UAE and uh, we met very recently, although we were following each other for so long uh, on one of the very popular uh, case uh, of one of the surgical cell surgical group and his comment was incorporated by various and it was uh, amazing comments and uh, last month uh, in the UAE in February last week or March first week we met and it, uh, he is an author of amazing book where he have incorporated the regenerative medicine as a chapter in his book as well. And a uh, very huge journey, FRCP London, FRCP Glasgow, FRSCP Australia, FSCA USA, and, uh, you, and he have been to India and he said like, uh, Prabhu, you know, uh, what's my is the most important one. You know, the one of the Indian movie, I remember the movie Sangam, and that was a very romantic movie in that time of that. So now you can guess my age. So this is the journey, extensive journey of Dr. Yahaki Wan, and he is the affiliated member of Cell Surgical uh, Network, as well as a stem cell and regenerative medicine researcher, and Cell Surgical Network Regional Scientific Advisor, Medicare Hospital in Dubai, UAE. So welcome you, Dr. Kiban. So we'll have uh, really to bless today to have your journey, this extensive journey in regenerative medicine, in cardiology. So it's all about yours. Uh, Saloni, kindly help Dr. Kiban to share the screen and all. Oh, yes. So I can start share screen now, I think. Yeah, can, I think. yeah. I'm clicking there. And I go to my slides. Well, I'm there. And I'll just go there, I believe. All right, can you see my slides? Yes, yes, no. yeah. Okay, so I have first slide there. Yeah, that's coming. Well, again, thank you so much, Dr. Mishra. It was uh, really 
Um, it's my great pleasure and great honor to be among uh, you and my colleagues to talk about stem cell therapy in uh, application cardiac disease. And I would like to thank you and thank the uh, ISRM for giving me this very unique opportunity to talk about and share with you my humble knowledge about the uh, stem cell therapy in uh, cardiology. I might take 40 to 45 minutes, and I believe that the, the questions, you will uh, collect the questions, and then uh, um, you refer them to me at the end of the session. I'm happy to answer any question if I know what is the answer. So this is me, and um, I will go through the journey of cell-based regenerative cardiac therapy will go about the past, the present, and the future. I guess you are hearing me, doctor, yes? Yes, yes, you are correct, correct as well as visible. Slide is very clear. Fantastic. Okay, so I might move myself a little bit because my picture is covering my slides. I might disappear. All right. Well, there is a very popular say by Dr. Thomas Starzler, said the who is the father of uh, modern transplantation. Oops, I'll go back, sorry. So what he said, the history of medicine is that what was inconceivable yesterday and barely achievable today often become routine tomorrow. And we have so many examples in, in cardiology. You know, I don't want to tell you about the aspirin, the beta blocker use, the digoxin use, everything has been changed since uh, 40 years. So, and I just also give you a little bit uh, a hint of my interest in stem cell therapy. I published two books. This is the second edition of my book, which is interventional books. So talking about like more than 20 uh, interventional cardiac procedures. So when, when I start reading uh, about stem cell therapy, so I added a chapter because stem cell is actually is an intervention. You know, we, you give it either a direct intramyocardial or intracoronary injection and so on. So it is, you are intervening inside the heart. So I thought I will add this chapter to, uh, to my book. So I have a little chapter, 29, uh, uh, called cell-based uh, uh, regenerative therapy, which is anybody interested, I have a very free soft copy uh, PDF I can send later on if anybody is interested. Now, talking about stem cell therapy in cardiology, as you could see from this slide, you know, we are really lagging behind our colleagues, the, uh, whether rheumatologist or, or orthopedic surgeon. You could see from the slide most of the applications are mainly in uh, arthritis, a lot of things in neurology, and uh, I don't want to go through all, but you could see that in cardiology, we are barely there. There is a very thin line of application of stem cell in, in cardiac disease. So what is the rationale of cell-based therapy in heart disease? Why? Is there a reason to do it? And I think there are some evidence which I will go through this evidence and the rationale. Now, as we know, the management of heart failure has extended the lifespan of patient population. However, we were not able to reverse the disease. We are just treating the symptoms and the signs of the disease, but the damage is there in the heart muscle. Apart from heart transplantation, there are currently very limited options to overcome the poor prognosis of end-stage heart failure. So most of the patients end in transplantation, and as you know, the transplantation is a very long waiting list, and very few lucky patients can get it. So this urgent clinical need drives the exploration of cardiac uh, repair with a stem cell therapy and many efforts aim to the use of the regenerative property of stem cells for strategies to repair injured myocardium. 
And for nearly a century, uh, the heart has been considered as a terminally differentiated post mitotic organ, which is unable to replace a dying uh, uh, cardiomyocytes. However, this premise is no longer valid. As we know, I will, come, I will go through you that the heart can regenerate itself. Because there are a pool of resident cardiac cells that can acquire the cardiomyocyte, can become a vascular smooth muscle, can become an endothelial cell. Uh, this has been clearly identified in the human heart itself. Now, again, the other fact we know spontaneous cardiac repair is there, but it is minimal. And the regenerative response to the non infected uh, uh, as a gene regenerative response to uh, uh, non infected tissue or the tissue surrounding the infarct zone. Now, spontaneous myocyte regeneration, however, does not compensate for the loss of myocyte in the chronically a pressure overloaded heart and spontaneous cardiac repair may delay but does not avoid or reverse the progression of heart failure. So these facts we know them already. Again, uh, in a patient with heart failure, what is the rationale of cell-based therapy? Why, why we need uh, a stem cell or regenerative uh, tissue? We know an acute myocardial infarction is usually associated with loss of billions of cells. There is no available therapy to reverse the primary problem of myocyte loss and myocardial infarction. As you know, we have so many modalities of intervention. We do primary angioplasty, take patient uh, on emergency to the cath lab to open up a, a, a blocked artery in heart attack. We have a lot of reperfusion medicine and so on, but they are still not enough. There is a clear evidence of an, an ongoing cell division in the human heart after myocardial infarction. There is, there is no doubt about that, either in the dead area or in the surrounding area of the heart attack. The stem cells have been shown to regenerate the infarcted myocardium in animal models. And cell therapy is a new treatment modality providing mechanism of cardiac repair following injury. Now, what type and what or what is the characteristics or the character of cells we need to repair the heart? So the cell should have number one, have ability to regenerate damaged myocyte, ability of regeneration. Number two, we need a, a cell which can be easily obtained. And that's very, very challenging. We, we want it to be a safe means. This cell has no immune issue or any cardio uh, carcinogenicity. We want an easy cell to store and to deliver the heart. And I will, I will come later on to the issues of stem cell delivery and, and all these uh, issues. So again, we are always talking about stem cell, stem cell. What, what are the mechanisms we believe that stem cell can cause uh, cardiac repair? Two main mechanisms. Number one, it, it can cause a new vessel formation by different uh, mechanism of action or different uh, technique by either perivascular incorporation around the blood vessels or differentiate into endothelial cells of the blood vessel, or it can produce a paracrine factors which can affect the surrounding cell to produce a new blood vessel. This is one mechanism. The other mechanism is direct conversion or differentiation into myocardial cells. Now, what type of therapy we have, and I, I will come to that later. We have a treatment in acute myocardial infarction, treatment in a chronic ischemic heart disease. We have treatment in dilated cardiomyopathy, treatment in a refractory angina. So the role of stem cell therapy in heart disease. Number one, I will talk about 
myocardial infarction or post myocardial infarction. Uh, I will review the literature in ischemic cardiomyopathy, non ischemic cardiomyopathy, intractable, resistant, uncontrolled angino and maximum anti anginal drugs, the role in cardiac surgery, the role in congenital heart disease, and the role in microvascular angina, which is very common disease, whether fortunate or unfortunate, this is common disease in women and has no treatment because it is microvascular coronary disease. Okay, so have, do we have clinical trials in cardiology? Yeah. I, I think since 2002 or 2004, <clears throat> up till now, there were many study, which is more than 300 phase one, and phase two clinical trial have shown mixed result as the studies have many differences in the following points. You know, in, in, in cardiology, the issue is how to reach the heart. And reaching the heart is, is, is a very uh, important in order to give the best result. So we have issues in all these clinical trials we have differences. So what differences we have? For example, the trial have cell isolation technique different from the other. The cell preparation technique is different. The types of stem cell use are different in different studies. The protocol are protocol differences. The number of cells inject up till now, we don't know exactly what is the number, how many millions we need to give. The timing of cells infusion after myocardial infarction. Is it immediately within two hours? Is it two, one day, three days, seven days, or after that? This is also important. Now, th the roots of infusion, I will I come to that later with you, because the root of infusion is also important and it, it, it have different impact on the result. Now, what is the LV, LV ventricular function or rejection fraction? The age of the patient is very important, whether he has comorbidities or not, and the study design. So with all these uh, differences, you could see different results in a different trial. This is an example of the sources of stem cells for cardiac regeneration. Uh, which has been used over the last 20 years. Earlier, they used skeletal myobl myoblast ad, uh, stem cells, adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cells. Bone marrow has three types of stem cells has been used. Uh, uh, peripheral blood also uh, has been used. The muscle cells inside the heart, which is called cardiac stem cells, all has been used in different uh, clin clinical uh, uh, trials. Just little differences between cells derived from bone marrow and uh, a cardiac stem cells derived from the heart. The bone marrow derived uh, uh, cells, uh, usually this, the, they are autologous and they have a paracrine effects. They have pluripotency, the disadvantage, now, adult cardiac progenitor cells, the difficulty to get them is by a cardiac biopsy. So that makes their availability is uh, very challenging. The advantage, they are autologous and they can differentiate into all cardiac lineage and they have paracrine effect. As I said, the disadvantage, it is an invasive procedure. I'll just go with you what, through quickly what happened if we get a heart attack. As you could see, this is a normal heart with normal muscle. When we get a heart attack, we get this ischemic part, uh, or so-called damaged uh, muscle. And as a compensatory mechanism, the, the, uh, the, it will convert into scar tissue. Compensatory mechanism, the heart will dilate and the rest, the normal cell will cause hypertrophy in order to keep the same cardiac output. So the hope is when we give uh, a stem cell, 
we can promote formation of new blood vessels and inhibit the cell death and apoptosis and preventing this process of uh, uh, remodeling. These are the roots of stem cell uh, uh, application to the heart, either intracoronary infusion, that's why I call it invasive, intracoronary infusion, which is uh, during cardiac catheterization. The other technique is we, uh, this in the middle, I don't know my pointer there, yeah. You could go through, again, cardiac catheterization, the cat lab, you have a catheter with a needle at the tip, and you can inject the cells directly into the damaged or diseased area. The other technique is during open heart surgery, where uh, direct uh, uh, intramyocardial injection of cells. Now, the one which I am really interested now is, and most of the literature is uh, giving a good update, is intravenous infusion of stem cells. Now, what stem cells type already use in heart disease? As I mentioned, I went through the slide with you, skeletal myoblast has been used, bone marrow derived stem cell, we have so many types, one of them hematopoietic stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and endothelial progenitor cells, all these cells are present inside the bone marrow. Uh, the most recently used and the commonly used cells and not only in, in cardiology, but I'm sure most of you are using now adipose-derived uh, uh, adipose derived stem cell or mesenchymal stem cell, especially the stromal vascular fraction, which is very safe to give intravenous infusion. This is my main interest nowadays is uh, stromal vascular fraction, which can be given IV, by the way. Uh, the other type of stem cell use, as I, I mentioned before, is cardiac stem cells, uh, which uh, you can give them uh, uh, by uh, cardiac biopsy. Cardiosphere-derived cell, which is like uh, after culturing a cardiac cell in a culture, you can acquire uh, different cells called uh, cardiosphere-derived cells, and there are many trials with that. Embryonic stem cell has been used, but I think uh, these trials were only in the beginning, like 2002, 2004, and 5. And nowadays, uh, in cardiology at least, uh, we are not using embryonic stem cell because of the issues you know about that. Um, uh, induced pluripotent stem cell, this is a very important cell which is like a conversion of a somatic cell into a character which look like uh, uh, embryonic stem cells and have pluripotency. So induced pluripotent stem cell, which is basically a somatic cell. Progenitor cells, as everybody knows that a progenitor cell is a biological cell that it is like a stem cell, has a tendency to differentiate into specific type of cell, but is already, they are more specific than stem cell, and they are already pushed to differentiate into its target cell, like pushed to differentiate into uh, myocardial cell or liver cell or pancreas and so on. So this is a very important concept, the progenitor cell. Now, as we know, the stem cell have paracrine effect means a hormone secreted by the stem cell which has an effect to a neighboring cells an, an autocrine signal which is a, a signal coming from the stem cell to the cells itself having an autocrine uh, effect exosome which i'm sure uh, most of you know very well by uh, about exosome which we learned a lot from dr uh, Mishra uh, um, language, uh, lecture, I think a month ago or more. And this is, we call it, I will come through that, the, the next generation or the third generation of stem cell therapy will be a combination of stem cell or stem cells and exosomes. 
again, another uh, uh, nice, interesting slide, just show you what I talked about. The source of stem cell used for cardiac regeneration. We have bone marrow uh, stem cell, which like either hematopoietic stem cell or mesenchymal stem cell or endothelial progenitor cell from bone marrow. We have skeletal myeblast. We have embryonic stem cell used, uh, C-kit uh, positive cells, adipose derived, which is uh, very interesting over the last 10 years, embryonic stem cells, progenitor cells, and cardiac stem cells. These were the sources of all the clinical trials um, for stem cell therapy. So what is the potential mechanism of action of stem cells? Um, again, so we believe that this is by intracoronary injection of stem cell, they have a tendency for activation of endogenous progenitor cells inside the heart to differentiate into um, uh, cardiomyocyte or to differentiate into endovascular uh, cells to produce new blood vessels. It can differentiate directly into a cardiomyocyte. It can differentiate into smooth muscle of the blood vessel or vascular uh, uh, smooth muscle. It can differentiate into endothelial cells of the blood vessel. It can inhibit apoptosis, uh, improve extracellular matrix remodeling, and the neovascularization. So by all these mechanisms of action, we hope that it will attenuate the remodeling, which uh, I showed you, and stop the dilatation of the left ventricle and uh, hoping improve functional capacity and enhance, enhance uh, uh, perfusion. Again, this is uh, uh, probably a repetition. Uh, it shows you how stem cells have autocrine effect how it have paracrine effect, how it have direct differentiation uh, into cardiomyocyte uh, and, and so on. And the end result is helping in cardiac repair. Just watching the time. I hope I'm not very slow. Now, what generation of stem cell use in heart disease? So probably I will go with you through the, we call it first generation, which is mainly bone marrow mononuclear cells, mesenchymal stem cell from bone marrow, and endothelial progenitor cell from bone marrow. Now, second generation use include allogenic cells, which is uh, from umbilical cord uh, or from placenta or other sources, cardiac stem cell, cardiosphere derived stem cell, uh, uh, there were also trials showing uh, uh, using cell combination. For example, cardiac stem cell with mesenchymal stem cell, embryonic stem cell, and cardiopoietic stem cells. And the next generation or the third generation, which I mentioned, uh, placental cells uh, uh, are being uh, investigated. Exosome, as I mentioned, and I'm sure most of you knows a lot about exosomes and their use. The Wharton jelly cell and induced pluripotent cells and patches. Patches is it, it's very commonly used in cardiac surgery where a patch of tissue being decellularized and replaced. The cells are replaced with stem cell and, 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 and used as a, a xenograft valve, whether in cardiac surgery or in congenital heart disease like pulmonary xenograft and, and others. Again, this is uh, uh, another slide showing the, uh, the history of type of stem cell use, probably more clear. But again, the current uh, gener generation is combination of stem cell therapy, either a cell combination or cells with exosome. This is the history of cardiology 
and stem cell history from 2000, 2000. And you could see the, the cells used. The first type of cell used, they were skeletal myo myoblasts and then stopped because of many reasons. After that, mainly bone marrow, which is in the beginning is unfractionated bone marrow mononuclear cell. So many, many trials were done with bone marrow mononuclear cells. And then the mesenchymal stem cell came on board, which is commonly used whether bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells or adipose tissue derived mesenchymal uh, stem cells. And then uh, cardiac stem cell uh, has been used, but not a lot. So mainly people are interested now in adipose derived mesenchymal stem cell because of uh, availability and easy uh, uh, application and uh, easy harvesting. So what facts about stem cells and the heart? What we have? Now we know, well, unfortunately, but this is the fact, most transfer cells are dead within a week. If you put them or inject them into the coronary arteries, most of them, they die. So we have to put this in, in mind that the retention rate of stem cell is not good. And there is difficulty for cells to engraft, to engraft and become differentiated into the graft tissue. So difficulty of engrafting, difficulty of survival, difficulty of proliferation because the, of the ischemic zone, and difficulty of differentiation. Now, clinical trial demonstrate that autologous cell-based therapy for cardiovascular repair are feasible and safe. I will go through these trials. Although efficacy of cell-based therapy has been limited, uh, it holds an enormous promise at preventing or reversing myocardial remodeling and promoting tissue regeneration. So I'll just go with you over the trials in, uh, in, in cardiac subspecialty. So clinical trials in myocardial infarction. We do have phase one, we have phase two, and we have even phase three trial. So on the left side, the trial which were negative, negative they are, doesn't mean they are harmful, but there was no significant difference between medical treatment and uh, stem cell therapy. Excuse me. Now, positive trial, they are more than double in the number of the negative trial, and they are on the right side of the slide, or my hand. Now, I just want, luckily, the result of BAMI trial. BAMI trial is bone, bone marrow uh, mononuclear cells in, in myocardial infarction, or acute myocardial infarction. As you could see, the result, unfortunately, this trial supposedly, uh, uh, it recruit 3,000 patients in each arm. But for one reason or another, uh, they were unable to recruit more than 200 in each arm. And the primary endpoint is all cause mortality, which is um, you could see there is no difference between the two groups of all cause mortality. But if you take cardiovascular death or hospitalization, it is much better, like 4.9% in the treated group compared to 9.7% in the people who did not take stem cell therapy. Again, p value not significant, but as you could see, the, the, the p-value not significant because the number of treated patients are not many, like, as I said, 200 in each group. So it is very promising, although it didn't reach a statistical significance of the use of stem cell therapy as a phase three trial. What ongoing trial? We, we are awaiting the MEC trial, which is safety study of allergenic mesenchymal precursor cell in intracoronary infusion. So hopefully this is a, a large trial uh, and uh, it is, we are waiting for the result. So what results we have? If we have, we have two or three meta-analysis of the results of trial 
and myocardial infarction. Meta-analysis of all these randomized trials has confirmed that cardiac stem cell therapy is safe, beneficial, has significant improvement in uh, myocardial, decreased myocardial scar, and most important, LV ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is the most important parameter of improvement in heart muscle function, which is basically means the pumping function of the heart. And that's how uh, people survive if the ejection fraction is low and high. So there is clear evidence that it improved the ejection fraction. And there was significant reduction of death, so mortality, recurrent myocardial infarction, and the further need of revascularization of the coronary artery. So this is the meta-analysis of myocardial infarction. And I could show you the meta-analysis which I, I presented is 29 studies of 1,800 patients uh, of intracoronary bone marrow therapy post systemy. And this has presented in uh, European Journal of Heart Failure. Uh, this is the first meta-analysis, 2012. Again, you could see in this slide, uh, the right, on the right side, favor stem cell therapy, and on the left side, further placebo. So you could see the changes in left ventricular function post stem cell therapy in these trials. So do we have result uh, in stem cell therapy in heart failure? Again, you could see the positive trial here and the negative trials are here. So they did get so many positive trials in heart failure and we have about four ongoing trial uh, of ischemic cardiomyopathy. And you could see these are the study. Of course, as I told you, I will not go through the details because the problem, we, there are differences, number of patients, differences, cell type, differences in the infusion technique, how we give it. We have differences in, in the parameter used for the uh, results and so on. So that's our issues in, in patients with, with the, uh, heart, fail, uh, uh, heart failure. But again, this is a meta-analysis and circulation, 2018. So we do have enough evidence, not only uh, in 2012, but this is in 2018, and that this meta-analysis is, is a, you know, taking more than 2,600 patients, and and uh, and uh, 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 the results show the clear uh, evidence. So this is the combined result of the last meta-analysis in the circulation. The all-cause mortality is better, cardiac death is better, recurrent myocardial infarction is better, heart failure is, uh, is better, even stent thrombosis is less in the treated uh, group. So we do have enough evidence up till uh, meta-analysis 2018. Now, as you know, uh, heart failure is different. We have other type of cardiomyopathy called non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy. And these are the result uh, uh, trials in, in, in heart failure due to dilated cardiomyopathy. And again, this is the meta-analysis and it clearly showed improvement. If you could see here, ejection fraction all went up. So again, enough evidence um, of use of stem cell. This is the latest meta-analysis which I presented recently in a conference. This is 2019, and they have presented uh, more than 6,000 patients uh, result uh, by uh, Tahzeeb and his colleagues, and presented in uh, the journal Cure Us 2019. And the conclusion uh, of this uh, uh, meta-analysis showed that uh, favor the benefit of stem cell uh, therapy. There is enough evidence in this meta-analysis to show that people treated with stem cell uh, better survival, better improvement of ejection fraction, and uh, better result. 
this is just an example of patient given a stem cell therapy. You could see on the left, maybe you don't see well, the ejection fraction is, was 31% improved into 48%. I can assure you there is no drug in cardiology or no any technique in cardiology which can improve the ejection fraction that much, like by 17%. By the way, a normal ejection fraction is 55, so it's not 100. Now, a man or a patient reaching from 31 to 48, almost reaching a normal LV function. So this is one example. Now, what is the uh, result of stem cell therapy in refractory angina? And I will go through again, this is a latest meta-analysis of uh, the available trial from 2004 to 2019 and the circulation by John et al. And what he found that stem cell therapy improved angina, very significant p-value, as you could see, uh, improved exercise capacity, very significant p-value, improved left ventricular ejection fraction, decreased anginal episode, decrease of the use of medications, improved myocardial perfusion defects by nuclear studies, reduction in mortality. That's a very important hard point. You know, uh, not only symptoms and signs and evidence of ejection fraction, but mortality is less. And that's very interesting uh, p-value, which is very significant, p.002. So what lesson learned? I'm okay on time, Dr. Mishra? Yeah, perfect. It's uh, perfectly fine. Okay, maybe I, I will come conclusion. But the conclusion is longer than this, uh, the, <laughs> the slide. Please, but Please go ahead, take your time. Uh, we do okay, have... all right. Yeah, please give me time because I really spend of days course. and days to collect all this information. And, and It will be really uh, great learning from this. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, Dr. Mishra. Thank you for that. Now, what lesson learned? Uh, uh, from clinical trials in cardiovascular disease. I will just go with you through our problems, our issue, and how we handle. It's not like giving a stem cell in a joint or giving it under the skin or maybe to the ovaries. We have, in cardiology, we have different diseases. We have many, many problems we have to overcome when it comes to stem cell and the heart. So number one, there must be an effort to standardize measurement technique. For example, how, how we measure our results. Is it by echocardiography? Is it by nuclear scan? Is it by MRI? That's important problem. Now, the other issue is we include inclusion of multiple endpoints. For example, quality of life, the uh, biomarker, the ejection fraction, the mortality, longer follow-up symptoms, and so on. Again, that's an issue. Analysis of rigorous clinical endpoints is very important. Now, type of stem cells is also important because as you know, there are types of stem cells have different function. So cells have more paracrine effect and ability of cell to engraft within the myocardium plays an important role in therapeutic efficacy. And that's what we are after. We want a cell can engraft, can differentiate into myocardial cell, and have a paracrine effect, which not all of them have the same effect. The mode of stem cell delivery, as I told you, uh, we have actually five modes. The, the fifth one is endogenous stimulation of stem cell or uh, diversion from bone marrow to, to the blood and then tissue. So mode of delivery, whether direct intramyocardial implantation, subendocardial needle injection, Intracoronary, intravenous also uh, has important role in the cell retention because issue in cardiology, when you give it to the damage, we want it to stay there, but not, not all. the roots are the same. If you give intracoronary, it might only stay four hours. So that's a very challenging part in the management, how to give it to the patient. Now, again, the dose, I'm sure all of you share with me this problem. We don't know the standard uh, dose for cardiac disease. So what is the threshold of the dose? Now, there are many studies 
uh, were done and uh, so far some of studies show that any threshold above 20 million of sale probably will not add on and it might give the same result so that's the issue is it from one to 200 million sales different study give you different figures harvesting technique again uh, as you already know there are many ways of harvesting the cell either the old way of bone marrow the current one is adipose tissue whether cardiac biopsy whether to get it from the peripheral blood and whether it is allogenic like umbilical cord and placid all uh, have an impact uh, uh, on the clinical trials now the potency of stem cells are affected by patient condition for example you know uh, a man who is above 70 uh, his uh, stem cell power and stem cell quality is different from a, a, a person who is 20 years of age because the, the stem cell age with time. So that's, uh, we have to take into course consideration. And that's, I, I covered number nine as well. So what challenges facing stem cell therapy in cardiovascular disease? Number one, how to fully understand the mechanism by which stem cell function? Because I show you like 10 mechanism, you know, possible mechanism of function. But that's a challenging uh, issue for us. How to understand the mechanism? Number two, the efficiency of, of stem cell directed differentiation must be improved to make stem cell more reliable and trustworthy. So how efficient in differentiating into target organ cells. The identification and proper isolation of stem cell from patient tissue. Again, this is very challenging as you know, each route, like liposuction, uh, isolation, and uh, processing is different from taking a board marrow or umbilical cord or wartum jelly and so on. Now the issue of rejection, immunological rejection, is a major barrier to successful stem cell transplantation hopefully with autologous cell have no immunological potential the oh, slides not moving right i'm sorry my slides are not moving so what shall i do Loni, can you check this yeah, it's moving. Now, despite these challenges, number one, the stem cell field is making great advancement, as all of you know, especially you are more advanced than cardiac application. I could see every day you are presenting tens and tens of publications, which I admire that. But in cardiology, we are really slow for reason which I mentioned. So the stem cell field is making great advancement. Number two, stem cell therapy is uh, already available in treating several diseases and conditions. The impact of stem cell in future medicine appear to be significant. With stem cell and all its regenerative benefits, we are better able to prolong and improve human life than any time in history. Now, what conclusion of role of stem cell in uh, cardiology? Number one, nearly two decades of research support the idea that cell therapy uh, to promote cardiac regeneration and repair is safe and potentially promising. To date, no trial has been conducted with sufficient statistical power to demonstrate efficiency of cell therapy to reduce mortality. As I mentioned, only a few phase one trials as a, a mortality benefit. Never, nevertheless, multiple cell types have been investigated for a variety of cardiac conditions, and important lessons about trial design have been learned and are guiding the first wave of ongoing phase three trials. As technologies improve, engineered and modified cell types, along with rationally designed uh, cells, combination therapy can be submitted to early stage proof 
of concept clinical testing. Modified adult stem cells and human pluripotent cells will likely be tested imminently as well cell-free products such as stem cell-derived exosomes and microparticles. The use of engineered scaffold, which I mentioned mainly in cardiac surgery and surgery of congenital heart disease, is progressing really nicely. So engineered scaffold and repeated administration of cell will be tested soon and will move us to the next phase of the field. Now, after several decades of experiments, stem cell therapy is becoming a magnificent game changer uh, for medicine. Uh, currently, untreatable neuro neurodegenerative diseases have the possibility of becoming treatable with stem cell therapy. Induced pluripotent pluripotency enable the use of patient own cell, as I mentioned, which is somatic cell can be changed into induced pluripotent cell, which has the same potency of embryonic uh, stem cell. Tissue bank is, is very important, are uh, becoming available uh, worldwide which uh, allow a repeated uh, use of, uh, after culturing of uh, 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 the cells. With stem cell therapy and all its regenerative benefits, we are better able to prolong human life than at any time in the history. So what is the future, what is the future prospects of stem cell or cardiac stem cell? Uh, we need an ideal, candidate donor cell for myocardial reconstitution is a stem-like cell that can be, which is probably very uh, impossible, can be easily obtained, has a robust proliferation capacity and a low risk of tumor formation and immune rejection. It can differentiate into functionally normal cardiomyocytes and is suitable for minimally invasive clinical routes of uh, or routines for transplantation, for example, intravenous infusion. The use of stem cell therapy for heart disease is a complicated and still poorly understood process and require a standard protocol for the characterization and quality control of stem cell uh, preparation. Uh, the considerable advance in our current understanding have shown that stem cell therapy is safe, moderately affected, and is mediated by indirect paracrine mechanism. The dissection of the paracrine effectors induced by stem-like cells in cardiac regeneration will also pave the way uh, for therapeutic intervention. To resolve the issue concerning optimal cell type, cell factors, the dosage, the patient population, and the route and timing of administration. Uh, to proceed with rigorous large scale, rationally designed and randomized clinical trial, tissue engineering might help us in the future. Micro RNA regulation of cardiac regeneration and the reprogramming of fibroblasts to become a cardiomyocyte. Of the shell product, like in a decade or so, uh, uh, we hope it can be available to be uh, uh, used uh, in cardiac repair. Different mixture of cell for patients with recent MI and those with chronic heart failure, as I said, two or three mixture of cell. Uh, intravenous stem cell infusion for patients with dilated non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and post-myocardial infarction. That's what we hope in the future. Cell therapy, unlikely a sole treatment for heart failure, but an important adjunct to other therapeutic approaches, which uh, I will not uh, talk about that. So what is the conclusion and uh, relevance? Although stem cell therapy for cardiovascular disease is not yet ready for routine clinical application, significant progress continue to be made. Physicians should be aware of the current status of this treatment so that they can better inform their patient who may be in search for alternative therapy. 
I'm sorry I, bo I bored you a lot. Thank you for listening to me. And I, I hope that I, I gave you uh, uh, some information regarding stem cell therapy and the difficulties which, uh, especially myself as a researcher, is facing to introduce this type of treatment to the cardiology community. And after that, after convincing the cardiologist, maybe then we can uh, share our opinion with our patient. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for all of you, for ISRM and for my close friend and colleague, Dr. Mishra, for giving me this opportunity to raise my voice. Uh, because I tell you many times I talk about stem cell, maybe people laughing at me, but I'm a million percent sure. Uh, you know, I have been in cardiology like 40 years. I'm sure one day it will come that it, it will become routine. Thank you very much and uh, God bless. Thank you, Thank you dear Doc, for this uh, wonderful talk. Uh, can you stop your slide? If you we have uh, some of the questions from the participants here. Um, uh, from uh, Dr. Kimeo, we have uh, one question from heart failure uh, reference, uh, HF, I think it should be HFPEF, I think he's asking for HFPEF, uh, heart failure preserved ejection fraction patients on a stem cell therapy, are they on GDMT? Or, and the benefits of a stem cell therapy in heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction? With low ejection fraction. Yes, preserve uh, because HFPF, I think, yeah, lower preserve, what you can say. Uh, heart failure, HF preserve, yeah, no. HFPF. Okay. Yeah. Now, the answer simply is no, because all the study done is uh, on heart failure with low ejection fraction, not on the preserved uh, ejection fraction. The answer we don't have any trial on that yet okay uh, because of um, uh, i'll add here dr kiwan if you will uh, allow me to add some comments uh, yes. in this uh, heart failure yes, if please. you don't mind uh, in uh, 2020 uh, recently when last year uh, one paper came by dr uh, rl saba group uh, basically, no, exactly, it was uh, in immune dysregul uh, dysregulation in uh, HFPEF. So in immune dysregulations, they um, talked about the various aspects, uh, how this uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, regulate this um, heart failure mechanism, as well as the T-cell-based analysis they did like uh, T regulatory cells, as well as uh, what about uh, the various perspective. So on the basis of that paper, if we are analyzing with scientific perspective, definitely as uh, you are correct, uh, because uh, after that we all are running in the pandemic and in this pandemic situation, there is not much more the wet lab work, but uh, that paper have given the various horizon to think because mesenchymal stem cells have a huge uh, immunomodulatory property. If it's taken uh, from the strong, uh, like a pure population of mesenchymal stem cells, and uh, the T regulatory cells can be modified, but again, the challenges is like a route of administration. And now as Dr. Kivan have uh, indicated in his presentation as well, like nowadays, the most of the time, NOGA catheter setup is in the trends to reach uh, as close to the cells uh, and uh, as uh, close to the targeted uh, organs. So these all are uh, under development and various are into the clinical trials. I hope uh, I'm correct, Dr. Kivan. Oh, yes, that's fantastic. And uh, actually, I'm not aware of this trial, and I would love if you have it or you give me the reference. Sure, because I've shared the paper in our group. Of, uh, fantastic. Our group. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, scientists are taking the benefit of the immunomodulatory function, because as you know, uh, stem cells have anti inflammatory immunomodulator, paracrine effect, direct differentiation, and so on. So this property has been even recently used in the treatment of COVID-19 because of the storm, you know, 
so, uh, and again, in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, HFPF, uh, there is no damage to the, to, the, to the heart muscle. So maybe there is an immune factor which can be modified to improve uh, the, the, uh, the, the function and the ejection fraction. So that's a, a very, very good and clever idea uh, to use the stem cell in and, uh, no, normal ejection fraction. Because they have that paper have incited on the interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, and uh, many other factors. And we can correlate with the uh, if, like the way in interleukin 6, uh, anti anti interleukin 6 have been used in the uh, like uh, S2 inhibitors protectant in, in case of the COVID nowadays. So many of the correlations people are uh, doing the like uh, uh, anti um, 1L beta and uh, anti um, interleukin 6 and how it will be like an anti fibrotic properties. So these all um, we'll get back. The, uh, if you'll share Dr. Kassel, uh, which one asked this, Dr. Kime Yu. Just drop your email. I'll send you that paper. That paper is really very interesting. If you'll drop your email, our group will send you that paper. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Then another uh, question is from uh, Dr. Mark Mueller. Uh, uh, might you know, he's in uh, UAE itself. He's from- um, My Germany. colleague, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. uh, so thank you for the comprehensive update, Dr. Kiba, on the option of regenerative medicine in your field. Did you, he's an ENT specialist and he is our uh, fellowship colleague as well for stem cell and regenerative medicine. So you know, did you come across any side effects or contraindication for stem cell therapy and myocardial infarction? No, yeah, I think that say, talking about safety, I think what I have a video said, it is stem cell is the safest drug uh, in the planet. In a sense, I'm talking about autologous, autologous use. So they, there is really no side effect. Most, most of the side effects are related to the harvesting uh, 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 side effect. For example, if you take from bone marrow, there are bone marrow aspiration side effects. If you take a liposuction, people with myocardial infarction, they are on anticoagulant. They might bruise, they might get ecchymosis, they might get hematoma, but all are minor. However, the side effect to the in heart and, and cardiac disease of the cell itself, uh, no, I have never read about that. Unless we're talking about allogenic. In allogenic, there were some uh, side effect related to allergic reaction. Um, so that's the only thing I know. But, but that if autologous cells, which is commonly used now, is, has no specific side effect. Then another, thank you, Doc. Then another question we have from uh, Dr. Gulhima. Uh, it's uh, when you use allogenic adipose derived stem cells, do you need to worry about HLA mismatch? No. You don't need that because um, they don't have, uh, you know, this uh, uh, HLA antigen and there is no uh, uh, chance of rejection. So autologous, no need, even allogenic, even allogenic. There was, there was a study comparing allogenic uh, and, uh, and autologous stem cell and, and heart disease. They found there is very little difference. That's why they stopped using the HLA typing even in umbilical uh, stem cell. So basically, uh, uh, there, there, is, there is no need for HLA typing. Even most of them is in primal stem cells. Uh, most of the time we call like it generally doesn't express the major histocompatibility complex class two. So generally it works like as an um, uh, autologous. It uh, generally don't do the graft rejections. Yeah, you know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Then another question we have from Dr. Pankaj. Uh, what is observation about VT or arrhythmia arising from a stem cell injected area? Yes, uh, I, I didn't go through that. Uh, one of the, uh, the common 
uh, the, the not rare side effect of stem cell is arrhythmia, uh, uh, induction of arrhythmia. And th the incidence of arrhythmia is, is rare, but it is uh, there and uh, usually is not a serious uh, uh, side effect and uh, but definitely uh, it, it is higher than people who are not given uh, stem cell therapy especially i'm talking about um, uh, like subendocardial uh, injection uh, by anoga uh, catheter but it's not serious then another question again we have from Dr. Gulhima. Is there any difference in result in intravenous given adipose derived stem cells versus intracardiac injections? Yes, there, yeah. That, that's a very, very important question, which I'm expecting, by the way. That's why I'm shifting into intravenous. Now, there was a trial which they compared the following they compared intracoronary, which is IC, compared subendocardial injection by needle and compared IV infusion. The result comes as, as follows. The best result with direct subendocardial injection through NOGA catheter. The second best result was with intravenous infusion. And the third or the lowest uh, expected result with intracoronary. And I can assure you in the coming few years, nobody will use intracoronary for so many reasons, which I didn't mention. Subendocardial NOGA injection is a very complex and very expensive technique. So probably the method in vogue will be intravenous infusion. And that's what I'm promoting because it can give you as good result as uh, injection by catheter, but not intracoronary. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful answer here. So we have covered almost uh, every questions from the audience. Uh, we were live on the social media as well. Probably we have some of the questions on the social media. That question, doctor, will send it to you because we are live on the uh, Facebook as well. So we'll definitely send you some of the questions. No worry. Uh, we'll have uh, some of your experience here, some of your like uh, from your beginning and uh, to till date, especially in regenerative medicine, what is the most troublesome you find? Like uh, what, in your experience, what is the most uh, important obstacles in uh, progressing of this uh, progression of this field? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, as I told you, I'm very beginner in the field, my, my age in the field, my age in cardiology, probably 36 years. But my age in stem cell is probably three and a half years. And when I started talking about it, I think people, they think I'm probably not, not realistic because uh, many doctors believe this is, this is, you know, many people say this is rubbish because there is no scientific evidence. There is no much clinical evidence. And most of the trial, they call it, uh, uh, experimental, which I disagree with them. It is, it is investigational, it's not experimental because there is difference. So the animal studies all finished. There are a lot of investigation going on in matter of clinical human trials. So I think introducing the stem cell field in the Middle East, this is my, now my baby, my new baby. And um, I, I am facing a lot of challenges uh, especially about people believe that intravenous use of any stem cell of IV for, for any reason is will not reach the target organ. So what most of the people believe, if I give IV, like 70 to 80 percent are trapped in the lungs. And I don't believe that because uh, the study which has been done only on animal, we don't have really uh, human evidence that stem cells, if given IV, are trapped uh, in the lung. And again, we, we, if even 20 or 30 percent bypass the lung, as I said, the dose threshold, we don't know. So whatever leave the lung, uh, I, I still believe it can reach the pancreas, uh, it can reach the heart, it can reach anywhere. So this is my main challenge is intravenous use 
of stem cell therapy for cardiac repair. And I'm working on that. Definitely, there are various scientific challenges. As you have said, most of the time people say, okay, it will trap by the lung. See, most of the, definitely, uh, if we'll do the targeted therapy, many now precision medicine are coming. Like we see the future, like if you'll see the future, CAR-T, chimeric antigen receptor, T-cell engineering, and the genome editing tools are coming. As precisely, we'll go to the targeted organs or other, or either as precisely with respect to the cells, which cells need to be used, and which kind of route of administration, what should be the number of optimum cell dose. So what's your comments on that? Like uh, there should be an uniform protocols. Currently, what we are lacking is the uniform protocols. If you we'll study the all meta-analysis as you have presented, many of the uh, clinical trials data, it shows like uh, someone is doing intramyocardial, intravenous, mesenchymal, heart and jelly, umbilical cord, uh, many XYZ various source. Uh, if you'll see, even into the post-CABG patient to the cardiomyopathy, to the myocardial infarction, or either dilated cardiomyopathy or ischemic cardiomyopathy. Like, what should we, what's your experience? Which cells is best cells with respect to bone marrow derived, peripheral blood derived mononuclears, or adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells? What's your comment and your experience of this uh, last uh, few progressive uh, years as well as the paper you have reviewed yeah well i i can tell you i depend on papers so i read but uh, uh, we, we are not allowed to use stem cell therapy in cardiac application as simple as that that's my struggle but from reading if i go from the dose there are trials comparing the dose of 5 million 10 million 20 million and above and the conclusion of that paper is the threshold 20 million of uh, cells uh, are enough and there is no point going higher so that's in terms of dosing the route of administration i i believe the intracoronary is not helpful because the cell will disappear with the coronary uh, circulation so either you give it subendocardial no gain injection or intravenous so that's i i believe the future route will be IV infusion. And the type of cell, again, I cannot tell because I tell you, they started in 2002 until 2008 using the bone marrow uh, mononuclear cells because they, nobody knows they are about the adipose uh, derived stem cells. Then when they found the umbilical cord, now most of the recent studies are using umbilical cord allogenic stem cell for Number one, easy availability. And number two, you can get millions and millions uh, by, from blood bank. But I personally believe the future will be adipose derived stem cell uh, from the fat because of easy accessibility. And most of us can learn from you to do uh, liposuction. And the processing of stem cell from the fat is, is really an easy uh, technique. So. I do believe the future, and remember, is autologous. So when we talk umbilical and Wharton jelly is allogenic. And the issue, theoretical issue about it's, it's a different cell from different human. So I believe uh, in, in the future, it will be intravenous infusion of at least 20 million of cells from adipose derived uh, stem cells. Because you see, the, uh, even I'll add some of the comments here, because uh, any hematopoietic source, like either blood derived, uh, peripheral blood derived mononuclear cells by FRSAs, or bone marrow derived aspirated concentrate or mononuclear cells, or even the pure population of hematopoietic stem cells, or many trials have been done with CD133 positive cells. So this kind of trial, so basic, any blood derivatives generally does the neovascularizations their basic goal to induce the neoangiogenesis. But when a scar formation happen, in case of MI or whatsoever, so basically if you'll see the, here we need not only the neoangiogenesis, the requirement is the immune cascade, the highly immunomodulations, as well as the antifibrotic property, 
which are majorly into the uh, mesenchymal stem cells with respect to the hematopoietic stem cells. So definitely the future is the mesenchymal stem cells. Many trials and many studies is needed. And the mesenchymal source is any tissue of the body can give you the mesenchymal stem cells. So do not need for even go for the cryopreservation or anything. But definitely, as the doctor have mentioned, the tissue banking is definitely a future. Many countries are coming up with the tissue banking now. And uh, many regulators are watching very closely with respect to the tissue banking even. Uh, then uh, in last doctor, I need uh, uh, like uh, most of the time you have seen, you have traveled across the globe and you have seen many uh, society are contributing the educational part of this uh, regenerative procedures, many of the Congresses. What's your comment? Like uh, most of the time, if you'll see the advertisement, it practiced like a magic medicine. It should be a stop. It should be well educated. It should be uh, patient education is highly important because patients should know first, like this is not a magic medicine. This is the last resort currently and most of the indication as a part of the clinical trial. What's your comment on that? Look, I, I totally agree. And uh, I think the, the care should be shared by not only the doctor, by uh, the patient as well, and by community and by organizer. Because as you said, if, if I show you our the consent form with, from Cell Surgical Network, it's like 10 pages. And the details, all the details are written in the consent form. And they are clearly telling this is, not this is not experimental, but investigational tool. And remember, remember, there is no harm. So if you don't get benefit, it will not harm you. And we need the help of the patient. We should not really mislead the patient that we are doing magic. This is absolutely wrong. And we know in clinical trials, all of you are scientists. And if we use like beta blocker in heart failure, the, the, the percentage of improvement compared to people who has not taken beta blocker is probably 9%. It's like 7%. But that's, uh, you know, that's statistically significant. So you will not expect all the patient on beta blocker to get improvement or all patient taking blood pressure, the blood pressure will come down. That's based on statistics. So we should inform the patient that, uh, that look, this is, this is a new modality of treatment definitely safe. There is strong evidence of improving your symptoms and improving your survival. And without the cooperation of the patient and the education of the patient and the education of the society, wherever you work in India or UAE or uh, in the States or any country, the, the, the regulator should understand uh, this is a new modality and it's going to where there is no doubt about it. But it is a matter of time, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful sharing. And this is how, see, I'll uh, share my experience a little bit here. This is how ISRM we formed because uh, we all were networked, we all were knowing each other, and that's how we have formed this association, International Association of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine. And we all accumulated. Uh, as a global family and sharing our research journey, clinical journey, and definitely some of them are the entrepreneur in regenerative medicine. So this all journey we are sharing here uh, through this platform and uh, every probably this educational platform bringing the education to the society as well as our many learned colleagues, those who are entering into the regenerative medicine and definitely we can grow together with the learning and sharing with this kind of procedures. So thank you, Dr. Kiwan for today's. Uh, I'm hand over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Nidhi Khurana. And uh, this is just uh, in honor to you, Dr. Um, Kiwan, and it will be real to you. So definitely uh, it's a pleasure to have you for today. And uh, thank you all delegates, those who have shared their questions and participated actively here. Uh, can I have a last word? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I just noticed among the names about, uh, apart from people I know from UAE, Mark uh, Muller, 
uh, Dr. Ala. I noticed two names. One of them is called Dr. Shimran Al Hassani. If he can hear me, he's from Iraq, and uh, the, 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 this this guy I call him guy. We were together 45 years ago on the same seat in the medical school, and I the last time I met him 1977. So my best regard to my my friend uh, Dr. Shimran. I could see Dr. Nazish, one of my registrar in UAE. Of course, Dr. Ala and Dr. Mark uh, Muller. Thank you all for that. And I'm, I, I'm really uh, very, very pleased that you introduced me to the world of stem cells. Uh, and, and I'm more than happy to have more and more presentation and share with you. And I learned a lot from your group. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kivan and um, Dr. Prabhu uh, for uh, this wonderful session that we've all had today. Um, and I also thank everybody who has been able to join us and take out the time from their busy schedules. Uh, we will keep meeting uh, through health tape episodes. The next episode is on 21st May and the registration link will be shared with uh, all of you on our uh, platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp groups that you're a part of. Um, so we will all see you on 21st May for our third episode of Health Day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much.